My name is Keith Banfield. I'm a master instructor in the art of Choi Kwando here in London, England. I was approached by the assistant head teacher of Barnum Primary School. His name is uh, Mr. Joe Napoleon. So Mr. Napoleon has taught some of my existing Choi Kwando students and he noticed how courteous, respectful, how disciplined and polite they were. And so he came to me and he mentioned that he had a student whose behaviour needed to be improved. His focus and his attitude towards his teachers, uh, parents and um, peers in school. Um, so I'm um, Felina Patel and I am Mohammed's class teacher in Year 4. He was very, he, I would describe him as disrespectful, but he didn't do as he was asked. Um, and he'd just ignore instructions, so if he was told to stop playing with a pencil, he would just carry on, as if he didn't hear. My name is Margaret Narcisse, I'm the Pupil Family Liaison Officer at Barham Primary School. And Mohammed was brought to my attention through his teacher, and also his mother as well, but we started his teacher, and um, his teacher thought that he didn't have no respect for women. Uh, she'd ask him questions, and if he didn't feel like answering it, he wouldn't answer it. And she just felt that, it, as a woman teacher, she wasn't being respected in uh, her work with him in the class so she brought me in and I worked with him on individual sessions to let him see that there's certain ways to talk to women and you know they have to have respect for everybody. He just didn't have any self-discipline he didn't know when he was doing something wrong he would sort of if he was told that he was um it to do or to stop doing something or even to do something he would just not do it so he's just disrespectful. Hey, my name is Joe Napoleon um, I'm an assistant head uh, assistant head teacher at Barham Primary School. Initially, um, I, what I noticed was that there was, I mean, I also know Mohammed from another capacity, which was to teach PE uh, to him on, on, over a cross of a couple of years. And what I noticed, particularly with children who were in his martial arts class, were that they, they appeared to be um, well-rounded, um, able to regulate their behaviour, able to regulate their temperament, their attitude towards working, their work ethic. So that was a noticeable similarity amongst some, some of the children who I would teach within my PE lessons and who I would observe from a distance. Um, so based on that, Mohammed was then um, considered to maybe do a I guess a kind of extended trial run or, or a kind of research project where I wanted to see whether or not uh, Mr. Banfield could have that same impact on Mohammed. Mohammed trained in our martial arts school twice a week. So a typical type class would be, would begin with the silent sitting exercise and it's a group activity where everybody would sit still silently for about a minute, they close their eyes and they just listen to the sound that their breath made and that would help them to, to become calm, focused and still. After that we'd take them through the warm up exercises and the basic movements of Choi Kwanda, the blocks, the punches, the kicks, the strikes. Then we would have classroom discussions and that makes up part of our, what we call our mental martial art classes. And so really when we teach the mental martial arts class, the whole goal of martial arts is not about fighting, but learning, but learning how not to fight. And how we learn how not to fight is by using this first instead of these hands and feet. So Muhammad took part in the mental martial art classes and discussions. And then finally we would have some short activities uh, where the children would then channel that excess energy or that energy that they've got within themselves in a positive way to the shields for self-improvement. I don't have to go up in the class because my job is to go into different classrooms and talk to the children that are given drop and bring them out, have one-to-one. -one. I can't tell you the last time I've had to bring my hammer out to have a one-to-one -one with and about his attitude to teachers. His teacher tells me he's doing much better now. Um, she, she has no conflicts with him about him not listening to her, talking, to, answering her back, not wanting to do the work. That yes, it's a change. He's a change boy. He's much better now. He listens. When I'm speaking to him, he makes eye contact, which is good, and he acts upon things when I say to him to do something. He can still make quite a few excuses for not getting things done, but it's a lot better in terms of quality and quantity, because before he'd try and get away with just doing a couple of sentences, whereas now he's writing a bit more 
than that, something a little bit more substantial. It's helped him with his discipline, definitely, I can see that. So, I mean, it's working, whatever it is. <laughs> My name is Karen Giles, I'm head teacher at Bottom Primary School. I'm pretty sure there are a number of children, and in fact, we're also thinking about Muhammad's brother perhaps following in his footsteps and being able to access this resource.